Mullet setups? Stylus versus root down? When will my Fox 38 be here? And what tires should I run in the summer? In today's episode of MTB FAQ. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of MTB FAQ where we answer the internet's most frequently asked questions about mountain biking. I'm Mike, I own the shop, and this is I'm Russ. I'm Russ. <laughs> you can introduce yourself. I, sorry. I'm Russ. I'm the head mechanic. And we've got four questions here from customers of the shop and people that comment on our videos um, that we thought that would be very informative to answer on video. So yeah. let's get right into it, shall right. we? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. All right. Question one is from our customer, Colton. He asks, I was wondering how running a 29 inch wheel up front and a 27.5 inch in the back would affect geometry. It's for a hardtail, so should I run a shorter fork? There used to be an old saying that went with it, that business in the front, pleasure in the back or something. Mullet is uh, business in the front and fun in the back. Well, it's that, that hairstyle, man, you know, where, you know, business up front, party in the rear, party in the back, that's it. I guess the first thing we would point out is that it doesn't matter if it's a hardtail or a full suspension, it's yep. gonna affect the geometry just the same way. Just about the same, yeah. You're gonna have sag in the rear of a full suspension bike, whereas you're not gonna have it with a hardtail, um, meaning that the su suspension compresses when you sit on the bike. Um, but yes, it will affect the geometry. It's gonna slack the bike out a little bit, and it's also gonna raise the bottom bracket. And whether that's a good thing just depends on how you're riding it and where you're riding. I'm actually riding a mullet setup right now on my DaVinci Spartan. Please note that I am running the 27.5 inch model of the Spartan and I put a 29 inch wheel on the front. Yep. So that would be something worth noting. So if you are running a 29er bike and then you just put a 27.5 inch wheel on the rear, it, it's gonna lower the bottom bracket and you would need to then put a longer fork on if you wanna raise it up. Yeah, and sometimes you run into tire clearances and so most people run in a mullet bike are gonna run a 27 inch bike with a 29 front. But yes, you can do it. It will affect the geometry. Um, but so, yeah, sometimes it's good. Sometimes uh, it might not be quite what you're looking for, but um, having a little lower fork um, can address some of that. Probably not all of it, and you will lose travel, obviously. Correct. Right now, for example, on my Spartan, I would run a 170 millimeter fork with a 27.5 inch standard wheel setup in the front. However, I did run it with the 29 inch wheel up front um, with a 170 fork. I felt like it raised the bottom bracket a little bit, just slightly more than I would have liked, just yeah. slightly, and I did lower it back down to 160 for a video that we were making, and I actually have just kept it that way. I feel like the okay. bigger wheel runs through holes a little bit bigger or better and it keeps my center of gravity slightly lower but if i'm going back once i go back to the bike park the fork's going back up to 170. this yeah. is just on smaller local trails where i'm not going super mega fast speed so yeah. all right question number two is from our customer daniel who asks i'm between the chromag stylus and chromag root down which one is a do-it-all bike and which one is a better climber on my local trails there is a lot of climbing I'm going to say the stylus is probably the do it all, do it all. I mean, they quote it as the do it all hardtail mm -hmm. and uh, it, it really does. It feels similar to a dirt jump bike. It's like a big dirt jumper. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd be perfectly at home on a pump track, jumping on it, uh, it rides great on the trail. Uh, the route down is faster on the trail. Bigger um, wheels. Bigger wheels. Um, a little bit, a uh, little bit longer wheelbase mm -hmm. on it. Bigger um, bike. Yeah, bigger bike, but um, they're and they're very similar. Yeah, I mean the stylus when you get on it feels different than when you just hop on a root down. The root down feels mm -hmm. like you want to go blah, 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 really fast downhill and just like smash through everything. Yep. The stylus makes you feel like, hey, this is a big. BMX bike for a mountain biker, and you can really just like throw it around, hop around, do stupid stuff on it. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually have a video if you want to learn more about the stylus. If you click up here above Russ's head, over Russ's shoulder, um, I do a little bit more in depth look at the stylus. That was from model year 2019, but very similar to the current 2020 model year. 
Yeah, and what I was saying as far as, I had mentioned them being similar, um, geometry wise, they're very close. I mean, the root down and the stylus, they're kind of the same bike in essence with different size wheels. Correct. Um, but they do have a distinctly unique feel mm -hmm. to their own. So when choosing between those two, we always recommend to choose your priority. Do you want to prioritize going fast and bombing through the chunky stuff? Or do you want to prioritize doing, you know, just more jumping and having a bike that can jump better in general and just be yeah. more playful and fun. Yeah. So it just comes down to the wheel size. Yeah. Prioritize baby. Sounds like you might be better on a root down. It'll climb better, bigger wheels should be. Yeah. Better at going uphill. All right, question number three is from our customer, Joseph. He asks, I recently ordered a Fox 38 from you guys and know it was on back order from Fox. Is there a chance I will receive it sooner than that? I'm getting antsy to say the least. No. No! If anything, it might be pushed back a couple days. We're just being honest at this point. Yep. We're not trying to, um, you know, over impress anyone with fake ETAs. No, we're, a lot of us are waiting for them too, and Fox is getting them to us as fast as they possibly can, and we're getting them out the door as fast as we can. Um, but um, we're at the mercy of, of Fox and, and their supply. So. As soon as that truck shows up, trust us. We'll get we you are, your report. We are not even putting things in inventory right away. We're bringing yeah. it right into the shipping um, area of the shop and we're getting it out the door. So Pro probably the number one question asked in the last yeah. two weeks. And that's not, this isn't cheesy keyword marketing. This is seriously one of the most frequently asked yeah. questions in the past couple of weeks. Um, if you're looking for one and you want to know when it's going to come in, there's an ETA on the website. It doesn't say add to cart. It says pre-order and it will say the date of when it's expected to arrive. Yeah. Don't hold the knives to our throats because we aren't driving the truck and we're not making the forks with our own hands. So nope. um, let's all be patient together. <laughs> all right, real quick, before we get to the last question in this video, we just wanted to thank all of our customers and fans. You guys definitely support the channel and keep things rolling. If you guys would like to keep seeing more of these videos, click this link up here in the corner and go and shop for all your bikes, parts, and accessories from our website at thelostco.com. We love you. Thanks, guys. And question number four, last but not least, Derek asks, which tire setup do you recommend for the dry conditions we're about to see as spring and summer are coming up quick? We have our different preferences here. We, we actually prefer both of them, or we, we'll ride both of these. Yeah, so. well, I mean, front tires first. Yep. Uh, the Asagai is probably my favorite tire in the summertime. Um, it works okay in the mud, um, but great in anything from light mud all the way through hard pack, loose over hard pack, all those conditions. Um, I think it's important to decide on your front tire based on your conditions and then rear tire, I believe, uh, base that on your riding style. Totally. And, and that's why when you ask a shop, a lot of times you'll get one or two answers for a front tire from your local shop and you'll probably get five to 10 answers for a rear tire from your local shop. Yes. Um, just because for that, just for that reason. Us included. Yeah, us included. <laughs> so here's two of our picks, and this is just Russ and I, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of the guys in the shop would probably um, agree on either one of these as they both work pretty well. Um, yeah, we'll mention a few others too. Yeah, totally. Um, in terms of front, I would agree, ask the guy. That's my yep. favorite up front. The DHF, it's a classic. It works very well. I like the ask the guy just a little bit better. For me, it, the ask the guy works as well as the DHF in any condition that the DHF is good in and works better at the extremes. Um, going to the rear tire, Probably my favorite in the summertime is the Maxxis Aggressor. Uh, comes in a couple different widths, a few different sidewalls. Where was I? A we're in sidewalls. We're at the shop. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Some of my favorite things about it is it still has pretty good braking traction, not quite as much as a DHR, but where it gains, for me anyways, is it's real lively. You can kind of break traction a little bit easier, squirt the bike, square off corners. Um, easier compared to a DHR2? Compared to a DHR2, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, not that it's difficult to get the DHR to move, but I like, 
you know, what I would call a livelier tire. Um, mm -hmm. Something that I can move the back end of the bike around a bit more, um, but I still want good cornering traction. And this to me is a good happy medium between that like semi-slick and a fully hooked up DHR. Yeah, and then I guess my main personal preference, I would totally run an aggressor. I've never have, but I've heard awesome things. But my personal preference is what I would consider to be both the best and the worst tire ever made, depending on your outlook and your riding style. So I really like the Minion SS. There's lots of other types of semi-slick tires out there. So you see Minion SS, Minion because it's got the same side knobs as a Minion, um, but it's got the center knobs of what's considered to be a semi-slick, which is what the SS stands for. Very small bunch of little knobs here in the center. What that does is it just makes this tire roll really fast. You're not pushing against the lugs when you're rolling around. Uh, definitely rolls considerably quicker than a lot of other options out there. And also the thing that I love about this is it's kind of that um, party in the center, business on the sides, where you can really break traction on this. You can grab your brake, lock it up, and do a little bit more sliding around. You don't really feel bad about like tearing up a trail because you're kind of just, just drifting around. Yeah, it's, um, not, it's not gonna dig in. Yeah. Um, and you don't, don't even have to break traction. You've already broken the traction. <laughs> you're, you're riding around with broken traction. In, until you're on edge. Um, yep. But they, they, I would agree, they are super fun for the right person, mm -hmm. um, just because you can really slide the bike around even more so than on an aggressor or something like that. Yeah, um, I, I just like where a lot of tires, there's a transitional knob, um, like the Asa guy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so there's kind of a knob in between the center and the outside. This, there, you are on the transitional knob the whole time. You are either on, on the side knobs, or you're kind of just off on the center. You're yeah. just floating around. Um, and this isn't, it's not as bad as I'm making it sound. Um, it's really, if you're using your hips a lot to steer the bike, you can make this thing move around and surf around. Um, however, I've ridden the semi-slick in wet conditions quite a bit, and it, it's really fun. But like scary. I said, it's it, it does get a little bit more scary on steep, wet stuff, especially like really steep shoots. You don't really have anything grabbing the dirt. No, I'd say in general, if you like a tire that has a lot of braking traction, nah. this is not the tire nah, for you. Not the tire. Um, but if you don't care about the braking traction as much or can deal with the back end moving around under braking and want something that corners really hard but is super fast, uh, then that would be a great choice. Also, one other comment about semi-slicks is that that's one of those tires that makes you go, woo! Cause you're riding around yeah. and like all of a sudden you like break and you're like, ah, and you catch yourself and you're like, whoa, the whole time. Cause uh, you're pretty stoked that you, you caught those side knobs and it's really fun. It's really yeah. fun. So. Um, we should probably mention two others, which yeah. I kind of have in talking about the aggressor, but the DHR from Maxxis is another great one just cause it, it kind of just does a bit of everything. Yeah, speaking of do it all, um, it's a good do yeah, it all. Yeah, great braking traction, great cornering traction. It does take a bit more to break it loose, um, but pe people who want a really planted tire really like that. And the other one that we should probably mention is the Maxxis uh, Dissector, yes. which is a newer tire. I haven't gotten to ride it myself personally, either. just because all that's been available is the EXO casing, which I tend to tear through too fast, and then a DH casing, uh, Max which, is, which is max grip, so it's pretty slow. Uh, but there is an EXO Plus version that's supposed to be out here in the next few weeks and I can't wait to try that one. Same, basically the Dissector, it's kind of a mix between, it's kind of like a rejuvenated high roller too, it kind of seems like, but different. A little bit of cross between the Minion and the high yeah. roller a little bit, which I loved the high roller too, was one of my favorite rear tires on the downhill bike. The Dissector will be faster rolling um, and longer lasting too. Hopefully, Yeah. but um, yeah. Hopefully it's as fun as a high roller too. I think the Dissector will be a really good tire to sit right in the middle of here. We actually have some, we should have grabbed one in the XO casing, but Probably. oh well. <laughs> well, we'll show it or... Here, Alex, put some B-roll up on the screen for the dissector since we forgot to put one out. <laughs> All right, well that was four questions and four, four answers. answers. Yeah, that's the goal, right? Yeah. I think we accomplished it. 
So if you guys have more questions that you would like to see us answer in these videos, drop them in the comments below, or you can send us an email to info at thelostco.com, and we will try our best to get that answered in a future episode. Yeah, keep them coming. Keep them coming. And like we said earlier, if you guys need some bike parts, accessories, or bikes, or anything like that, click this link right here. Go over to our, web our website at thelostco.com. Snag anything you need. Free shipping over 49 bucks and super cheap international shipping. That's what's up. Yep. All right. Until next time, we've got a lot of work to do. We'll All see right. you later.